Hi, it's Anna Anderson, and today I'm going to be discussing and doing some small demonstrations on my lesson plan about linear equations and finding and coming up with these linear equations um, in real world scenarios. Um, and so in order to demonstrate, it's a little difficult because in an ideal world, the students will be the ones doing all the work, writing up all the diagrams, drawing tables, all of that. And the teacher will mostly be there just to facilitate the discussion, facilitate the order in which they occur in, and then making annotations, corrections when they need to be, and also reinforcing the correct ideas and um, just kind of facilitating the learning environment rather than just telling them straight up what they have to do. Um, so demonstrating this is a little difficult, but for today's video, I decided to come up with a few scenarios of um, that I think would come up and student work, possible errors, and then how I would kind of address those as well as annotate them and the order that they come in. Um, let's start with group three. Um, and the reason I chose this one first is because I do notice an error and I just want to address that. And so what I would foresee a student in this group saying out loud <laughs> is, um, so we noticed when we drew out the figures that they were increasing by 26 every single time. And so we know that when we do repeated addition that we have to multiply. And so we decided to come up with this generalization, 26x, where figures increase by 26 for each figure number. Um, and so with this, I would say, ask the question of, can you show me in the picture where this pattern is happening. And they might say, oh, well, we notice that there's always, um, you know, there's 26 rhombuses because we add a blue section and an orange section, which is um, color coded just to make it easier. And so that's where we get the 26. And so I'd say, you know, that's great. Um, the one thing I do want to ask though about this group is, um, can you check to make sure this equation works and matches the figures up here? So they say yes for sure. So if we immediately plug in, we would see that figure one, according to this rule, oops, has 26. But our figure one only has 16. So how or where are we misguided by this? And so I think that this is a great start. They're definitely seeing the repeated addition. They've got that down. Um, and they've also got a good understanding of 26 increasing. Um, and I think they did a good job recognizing the patterns. This description for each increase in one figure, the number of rhombuses increases by 26 is a great start. Um, but I think we need to double check and make sure that it's 26 because it's not matching up with our actual value points. So. With that, I would get the second group up here. Tell me about your pattern and how you came up with your generalization. Um, and so this group is looking at it more from structural points. So we noticed um, for every time the figure increased, we add an orange triangle of rhombuses and a blue triangle of rhombuses. So the blue has 16 and the orange has 10. So every time we're adding 16 and 16 and 16 and a 10 and a 10 and a 10. So they're still getting at this repeated addition idea, which is great. Um, still seeing that 26 as we did in the last group, right? We're adding 26 every single time. So we're really, we're honing down on this idea that we see the 26 coming up um, as the pattern. Um, and they said we add blue and orange. And so what this group did with their equation is we add a 16x every figure, you add an extra one. So that's where the 16x is coming from. And then the 10, we don't start adding a 10 until the second figure, right? Because the first figure doesn't have that orange triangle to connect the kites. And so what they did was they subtracted one from the x to make sure that it was going to work out. Um, and so and so that they would not overcount the orange triangles because they only saw this orange triangle in figure two. And so they don't start adding the 10 until figure two, which is a great observation and definitely looking at it structurally. 
I like this equation. It's very, you know, you can see, oh, we have the blue and the orange, and the orange doesn't start till later. Um, I would ask them to double check, you know, maybe adding a table. The other group had a great table, so connecting to that would be a great opportunity. Um, making sure that we check, and as well as annotating, great job on this. Um, and so, and then they maybe check, and, you know, students may say, oh, like, I noticed this, and um, I think this group did a really good job of seeing where in the kite the pattern grows. Or also they said, every time, for each figure, every time I increase the figure, I add 60 plus 10, 26 is total. So that's where we're, we're starting to connect these two groups as well as looking at it from different entry points. Um, and so this is where we're getting that minus one and maybe the other group would say, oh, that's where we were over counting because it wasn't 26 every single time. Uh, so the last situation I came up with is probably the most efficient way of tackling this task and maybe what eventually students will want to do, um, except for instead of just telling them straight up, I think it's important to have them explore a little bit. And so group one came up with the table and they said, oh, we're adding 26 every single time. That's repeat addition, repeated pattern, time to make a generalization. Um, so maybe a student would say that and a student would also say, but then we were thinking, what about the y-intercept, right? And so the y-intercept is when x equals zero. And so we have to go back one to get the y equals zero which means we'd have to go back with our rule, which we already came up with, which is plus 26, so minus 26, 16 minus 26, negative 10, that is our y-intercept. And so 26 minus 10. Um, once again, I would ask them questions about how they got it, where it connects to the visual, you know, oh, here's the 26, and it connects because we're adding a blue and an orange each time, which is 26, um, big numbers. And then, um, the last question, kind of like how I would wrap up this lesson, um, well, there is an after phase where students will reflect on their work, but also, you know, what immediate patterns did you see? Um, you know, some of those types of things. <laughs> and I guess now that everyone has shared their generalization and the teacher has kind of pointed out a few things, it's important to compare them. And so what I'd pose to the class at this point is, does this generalization yield the same as the last generalization? And so, you know, having students to like gain these discussions and how do these two, you know, are they equal? Is the first one equal to any of them? You know, what similarities do they have? And um, which of them use the same pattern? Do they all use the same pattern? Just kind of getting this idea of where everyone's generalizations came from and then also making sure that we know which of these yield correct results and which of them don't. Um, and then the after phase would be a exit ticket um, where they're asked a few questions to write out on their own. And then hopefully in the next lesson, um, the next day, we'd go more in depth on um, even into more generalizations and you know more, maybe more analyzing this if we need more time. Um, so that's just an idea. But the exit ticket would be um, the generalization that made the most sense to me today. So kind of thinking about, did the generalization that I came up with, or did I see something on the board that made way more sense to me and I like a lot better, and why do I like it a lot better, or why do I like mine the best? Um, and then also kind of thinking about it in the future, when generalizing, I learned to blank. So kind of like looking on this reflective, what did I learn today? Um, and so that's kind of how, here are some ideas that, could possibly come up <laughs> and then maybe some ideas on um, how they would differ and then also talking a lot about connecting them and then connecting the visuals and annotating is kind of the teacher's job and um, having students discuss, you know, why is group one getting different results than group three and where are these numbers coming from and just getting a super good idea of what each of these variables mean. Um, and just having them explore it through kites in a real life situation, as well as kind of getting away from the teacher, just saying, you know, this is the y-intercept and this is the slope, you know, and just having them investigate, oh, when I repeat addition, that's the same as multiplication because I think students can make those connections. Okay, well, thanks for listening and yeah.